Well, here we are. <laughs> hey, meat catchers. You're <laughs> listening to Crunk Kringle and the Hack on Q303. <laughs> Q303 in the radio. morning. Aruga. Okay. <laughs> Up next with the traffic, we don't have anybody who does that, so... <laughs> Drive fast, take chances, use the vertical pedal on the right. <laughs> and uh, coming up at 12 after 10 to 5 to the hour, we'll have <laughs> that bitch doing weather. Oh, you guys. <laughs> ah, yeah, shut up, bitch. <laughs> Big round of applause for that bitch. We, uh, we should learn her name at some point. <laughs> Why? She's a woman. <laughs> Uh, and that's morning radio, everybody. We just <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, when was the last time you actually listened to a morning radio station? Like, is that still a thing? It is. Um, yeah. What? <laughs> when I say yesterday, it, it's that'll yeah, whatever Friday. Uh, trying to to get home from from uh, Tennessee, I uh, I just was listening to stations that would come in. Uh, like to point out that most radio stations in Tennessee suck a big fat one. Uh, are they all the same? It's very similar. It's a lot of uh, a lot of bro country and gospel. Nice. Now, nice. I'll tell you. You know what I ended up listening to because it's better music. Uh, the heat shield rattling underneath your car. Absolutely. <laughs> And that, kids, is what we call in the business a yes ant. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's improv biz. Uh, now I ended up there was like a couple times where I put on gospel because it was like old, like bluegrass gospel that my grandma used to listen to, and I was like, okay. all right. And there were because I, I know I mentioned it to you yesterday. I drove through a hell of a storm. Um, I'd say probably top. 10 storms that I've had to drive through. Um, there were only a couple moments where I thought, oh, this is where I die. This is <laughs> only how a couple. Yeah. Okay. As opposed to there was one that I drove through for like 35 minutes where I was like, I'm gonna meet my death. This is this is what gets me. Did you um at any point uh consider pulling over and not actually making the car move for a little bit? Yeah, I thought about that. But uh, mm -hmm. here's here's the thing. Um, I was raised by Bruce Smith. Okay. Um, my dad would not pull over for anything because in his words, it's just a storm. And if I'm going to die, I'm. it's just a storm. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die on the move, not sitting still like a coward. See, now... I'm going to have to take a little bit on Bruce on, on a couple of things. One, he's a thousand miles away, so at least I know I'm safe for today. <laughs> like, he couldn't probably get here by Sunday. Um, but uh, there, there's something to be said for, for courage. Yeah. There's also something to be said for he told you that, I'm guessing, during a storm where you, he, you were terrified, it was probably dangerous, and he had his child in the car. Yeah. And he went, well, I'm taking you with me, boy. I don't know. Just, <laughs> if we die, we die, boy. We're going to hydroplane into the fucking garage today. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Bruce. Great. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Well, that was the other I <laughs> When I was like, oh, well, part of the other, uh, every underpass that I went past had like three or four cars already underneath it. And okay. I was like, well, fuck that. All right. I guess I, I just, I just have to live up to my philosophy of drive fast, take chances. Uh, because <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. Oh, the cool kids lunch table. looks like it's all full. All right. I'll see if I can die over here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, and that's one of the reasons I had the, the bluegrass gospel on. I was like, well, just in case, you know what? <laughs> just in case we are going to see our maker today, might as well have his fucking theme music playing for him. <laughs> you know, we were going to make you sit out here on the bench for a while and think about what you've done, but you were listening to the Gatlin brothers on the, when, <laughs> when you met your end. So, so come on in. Uh, but you don't get to sit in the good part yet. You're going to be yeah. over. It, it's at, The room is a perfect temperature. Uh, you can eat whatever you want. You get to hang out with some people that you that you haven't seen in a while. But the broken ice machine is right next to the room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All there right. Is, 
even even in the afterlife, the ice machine doesn't fucking correctly operate. <laughs> and there is a small dog that will be barking 23 and a half out of the 24 hours. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, he's currently sitting in my lap, by the way. <laughs> we learned that living in this part of the world, um, there's almost daily thunderstorms that come in out over the water. Um, they are. They don't take very long to, to blow themselves out. Maybe an hour, you know, at the most. Yeah. But this dog don't like them shits at all. Yeah. Well, I will say, like that, that storm front that I drove through yesterday. Um, I, I guess, thank God, it was super windy, uh, with gusts up to like almost seventy miles per hour. Yeah, apparently, like you should be driving through that. No, you're so, right. You're, you're I, I, it was that. coming towards me. I was headed towards it. I was running between 55 and 75, depending on how well I could see. And <laughs> we just passed each other real fast. It was I, the first, I will say, though, and I was like, they keep the and this radio stations. It doesn't matter what station I'm on, kept doing the emergency broadcast hey, system. Hey. Or whatever that would always be. It's like, yeah. so you but please take shelter in, in an interior room, gusts between 60 and 70 miles per hour. And I was like, I don't, I mean, it's a little cloudy. I mean, how could it, how, how bad could it be? And then literally saw purple and blue lightning strike Ooh. like a hundred yards away from me. And I was like, oh, that, that's how bad it can be. Um, when the electrical storm looks psychedelic, pull yeah. over the fucking Prius, dude. <laughs> well, I, like I told Nick, if I was going to die, I wanted to die in a legendary fashion. I wanted truckers to be like, look, all I saw was was Santa Claus and a Prius, and it just he got blown off the ridge, and he just stuck both fingers out the sunroof and just did fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Only thing that was left were his arms, the roof sticking through, and the odometer that said this bitch is over a hundred thousand miles or two hundred, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> it's getting close to two hundred. Nice, getting, nice. Yeah. yeah, just knocking on wood, but yeah. I like it. I, I was a little stressed, a little stressed when it got through <laughs> through the storm. Yeah. Um, and then found a you know found a rest area. I was like, I need to get out straight because I mean I was white knuckling, just uh -huh. just eastbound and down, man. I was <laughs> and my, eastbound and down, loaded up, but fucking. <laughs> we gonna see if this storm does kill me. <laughs> uh, but I. I got out and I had to like unfold myself because I was so tense and you could just hear my bones popping back into place <laughs> and I'm looking around this rest area and it's just like downed trees and branches and leaves and I was like but like the the rest area itself super pretty like it was like the building was really well tended to and so I felt like uh I felt like David Spade when he and Tommy Boy when he pulls over and kicks the shit out of Chris Farley. <laughs> it's just looking around and be like, oh, prehistoric forest. That's how I was. Because I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, I just drove through that. Oh, that building's real pretty. I bet it's nice on the inside. I should go take a piss. I love that you got through it and then pulled over. <laughs> like, well, I could have pulled over so I wouldn't be stressed, but I'm going to have to pull over because I am stressed. <laughs> got it. Yeah. All right, this is, this is, this is, no, that just it says a lot. You know, yeah, what I mean? it does. It says I will fight nature, but then I'll take a breather after that round. You know, <laughs> God, that was terrifying and very avoidable. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, but that's the thing. I'm watching these the ball sack. I'm watching these people underneath the overpass, and their cars are doing this number as I'm driving past, and I'm like, Dad was right. I'm, if I'm just sitting there in the car. You know, I'm just waiting for it to get me. I might as well, you know, maybe I can dodge it. It's not an active shooter. It's a store. <laughs> I, I'm not saying it's, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's logical. There is no logic to this world anymore. No, no, there's really not. I, uh, yeah, what else? What else can I tell you? I, uh, it's been... 
been a hell of a few days. I don't know what the subject is, so I don't want to jump on anything. Oh, I already, no, I was going to say, I already told you what the, for the first time, I think ever, maybe the third time, I told you what the subject is. Yeah. And so we, we can go ahead and say it. We're going to be talking about some of the best slash works gigs we've, live gigs we've ever done. Because yeah. it sounds like you had a goddamn story for me from Tennessee. Oh, I sure do, pal. Um, I sure do. So I, I wanted to give you a little bit of heads up so you didn't have to come up with other stuff on the fly. But I knew this one was... Um, foremost in your brain <laughs> yeah yeah i've got i've got some... my bra straps in the way <laughs> just uh fixing some audio issues here there we go what's gonna do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> your penis looks weird today <laughs> it grew ears and it's looking at you <laughs> that is not just today that's, uh, <laughs> that's what happens if you peed it after midnight <laughs> this, um, is, this is what happens when you get covid yeah, Jesus Christ. The hack. He's got, he'll cough. The, he's a shitty comic. He'll cough the plague at you. He also walks with a limp and he's got sti open stitches in his mouth covering up hardening cadaver bone. So, hardening cadaver bone is uh, that was my stripper name in the goth clubs. <laughs> It's, a, it's not even like a DC comic. It's like a trauma bill. It's oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it writes itself, but it's not good. Yeah. He, it, that's uh, when you get the crossover of Kabuki Man and uh, Toxic Avenger because the hack, <laughs> the hack takes out Kabuki Man, but Toxic Avenger shows up and he can take the plague. He loves Yeah. It. He just, just whips out his big old weird drippy penis. <laughs> weird. Is that what he does? I'm not sure. I'm, I just picture him with a big drippy penis. I'm guessing that it is a oh, it's a giant drippy peen. Okay. Um, I I know he's he had sex in the first Toxic Avenger, and apparently it was um, it was enormous, um, and and they ended up in the girls' apartment and like the plasters falling off the ceiling of the old Ooh. couple that lived below her. Yeah, that was I watched that when I was I think ten, because of course. Um, my buddy's mom had no idea that uh, Toxic Avenger wasn't just a fun superhero movie. <laughs> There's a whole lot of drippy peen, mom. A lot of There's drippy, drippy peen, peen and titties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was the one scene where Toxic Avenger slaps a guy in the sack and he spits his own testicles out. That's fun. Nice. Yeah, he spits nice. him and you, you watch him roll across the floor. Yeah. Our wealth of knowledge is similar, but so specifically different. I don't have this just to pull from, from the um, from the depths of my mind. Uh, yeah, it's that was one of those things that just stuck with me. <laughs> okay, yeah, it would. My, I my sister's it would. birthday? Nope, couldn't tell you. Like, I have to look at my phone to get specific about uh -huh. you know their birth. I know what months, but the days? No, but I can tell you that Toxic Avenger fucks. <laughs> I'm convinced, by the way, that uh, family members change their birth dates year to year just yeah. to fuck with me. Oh, here, here's something. Because uh, uh, apparently I have a new name now. My name's Mike. Uh, okay, Mike. Because uh, a her... really shitty nickname. Hey, it's my buddy Larry, but you can call him Mike. Why? What? We don't know. Don't know. Um, so uh, my neighbor um, on one side, who has only been living here for a couple of years, um, he, like the first time I heard him, you know, like this has been going on for about a year and I didn't realize I just heard, I thought he was like, Hey man, but the first time he said it and I was like, Hey, what's up? But like a car was going by and I thought, ah, eh, my ears are kind of shitty sometimes. And then, um, it happened several more times. And then every time I was like, is he calling me Mike? Or is it like? And then today he's out mowing his yard and uh, he's like, what's up, Mike? And I was like, hey, Carl, um, it's been too long. I cannot correct you. <laughs> so I'm just Mike now. You'll just it's be Mike. Until the one day where like your wife's going to be out there. She goes, so Larry, who the hell's that? Uh, why did you correct me? I, I don't know. I don't uh, know. Well, I'm going to tell her that if she does do that, just to tell him that I've got shitty hearing. And so I just, he saw you wave and he said, hi, you know, just being neighborly. But uh, 
Yeah. He's a big goofy animal. He'll just wave and laugh at anything. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I Hello. did this thing in my last building. Uh, and I don't know why I started doing it. Well, I do know why, because I'm an alcoholic. But every time I would meet somebody from the building, and it's Chicago, so you don't really talk a lot. You know what I mean? We didn't have a, an outdoor area that people like, we had a nice courtyard, but you just like walk through it. You know, there wasn't really a place to sit even. I, I just told people that my name was different things, different times. Just to see if I would remember what my name was the next time I saw them. And I don't know why in the hell I would do it. It was nothing ever, ever weird, but I was George, I was Logan, and I think I was Sam for a little bit to different people just to see if I could keep it straight in my head. There's no, I gained nothing from saying, hi, I'm Logan. Like I gained nothing from that. Yeah. But did I do it? Yes. It wasn't even all that entertaining. I was like, well, it's just a lie for a lie's sake today. That's what we're doing. I, well, in, in college, uh, I would introduce myself as different names. Good. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, one, Larry is a dumb name and I hate it. <laughs> I hate. What's wrong with Larry? I don't know. Every, well, I'll tell you what, one, and now this is an old bit. I don't do it on stage anymore, but I'm not, I'm not running the bit, but I used to talk about it. What, but there's never been like a hero, like in a movie named Larry. You've never seen like an action hero kick a door in. Except for, was it Dirty Mary and Crazy Larry? But even that was not a hero. That was just a main character. But you've never seen a hero kick a door in and someone look up and go, oh, thank God, Larry's here. <laughs> <laughs> and also, anytime Larry, especially in the past like decade, if there's a Larry on a show, he is the nebbish like accountant or it's like on SVU, and he's the creep that they arrest in the middle of the My Little Pony movie matinee. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that this guy is going to be the pederast because you've seen him in other stuff. So, they, you know, he's a that yeah. guy actor. You're like, oh, no, that's, uh, that's uh, Michael Madsen. Yeah, he's, 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 he's sobered up long enough. No, he's dead. But, but you get the idea. Well, that show's been on for forever. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, was that uh, a, a young Paul Giamatti? Yep. Yep. <laughs> He's Larry, yep, Larry was tugging off in the, uh, but that's the other thing, though. I said, that's Larry Le the child, diddler. <laughs> Larry, oh, don't take that out of context. <laughs> but like, he was never like, even like the main bad guy. He was always just like a skeezy little creep. Just, it, it wasn't like, you know, the cool rapist. He was just kind of a gross one. <laughs> concept of a cool rapist is kind of sitting with me real hard i feel like i just ate like a bowl of butter like it's just like it's just in my <laughs> butt it's like oh god cool it wasn't rapist. you know i'm not saying it, he I wasn't mean, you, you, you need a skeezy rapist to have a cool rapist you need the comparison i guess yeah but uh, yeah i mean one's in a suit one won't get, won't get his finger out of his nose while he's talking to the murder cops i get that part yeah. exactly exactly the murder cops yeah i think i stole that from uh that's a mulaney bit where he talks about svu i think <laughs> well i just now i feel like we need to uh write a treatment and pitch a parody show called murder cops murder cops dun, dun, dun. <laughs> because most of the cops in movies and on tv that we grew up with and like like that we grew up with or that were on in the 70s most of them just committed murder i mean sure they were like they were like uh who's in yeah. self-defense but they were just murdering people yeah i mean that's the, that would be that's how you have to take that murder cops solving crimes by murder <laughs> there won't be no trial you mean solving murder crimes no 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 <laughs> fixing problems through the power of murder, murder. That's the only tool in the box for the show. The boys murder people. <laughs> I've got a problem. What do you suggest? Click clack. Murder. Premeditated right. murder. <laughs> ba -ba 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 murder cops. Manslaughter for pussies. Murder cops. <laughs> and the, but they both have to have like the cool like cop mustache, like yeah. <laughs> giant cop mustache. They just they just kill people with whatever they can just it's not just shooting sometimes it's an ashtray yeah they, found they, objects all the time yeah. yeah 
<laughs> and then they have to say something cool afterwards. Oh, you have to have a catchphrase. Well, I bet like, you know, a, a pun. It's like some you know, you hit somebody with an ashtray and be like, smoke it'll kill you. You know, it just. Oh, okay. 100%, yeah. 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 I, uh, you know, just one, because it's a parody show, just one where they just keep making a guy smoke like a whole pack of cigarettes at a time and while they're they're torturing him for information and then he just dies of lung cancer right there <laughs> we accelerated it high five killing them with a bunch of dildos quit fucking around <laughs> looks like I'm not we... beating him to death just uh, killing him with a bunch of dildos yeah uh, but not hitting him with it i'm not sure what you like I, like cutting them with microplastics turning the dildos into microplastics and injecting them into his heart is the yes. weirdest way to kill somebody with a dildo i've just decided yeah i think i think that wins i think that goes in that's how we start season two <laughs> if we have picked up again you gotta go over the top yeah. you gotta jump the shark immediately <laughs> <laughs> i think i think the first episode the first the pilot episode we just have them literally jumping a shark <laughs> within the first 10 seconds just their car over like like several sharks one jumps up they murder it with the front of the car <laughs> and then and then they use it to beat a guy to death and uh and then say something like, you know, why'd you do it? Well, this guy looked fishy or some stupid shit. Yeah, you know? that works. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and then it cuts to them standing next to the shark, like on a hook, but also the guy on a hook. You just be like, hey. <laughs> Murder cops. Murder cops. <laughs> I don't want in time to shoot anybody. That's going to be the thing. They never, that's, gonna, that's the thing. It's like, we never unholstered our weapons. No, but you ran over a guy with a tricycle. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took three hours. <laughs> I'm committed to law and order. But I've never had to hold, unholster my weapon. Well, <laughs> no, not if you keep launching people into the ocean, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have, you, you have a trebuchet attached to the back of your 67 cutlass. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because we mean business. And slaughter pussies. <laughs> Solving crime. Premeditated murder. It's, 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 it's got legs. The show's got legs, pal. They, I, occasionally they have rivals that show up that are like, you know, the, the 80s action heroes that just shoot everybody. And they're just, that's what they just stand there. That's the, the pussies. Yeah, you don't take the easy way out. Yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> You never use bullets. Sometimes I do, and just like throws a bullet at somebody, and, hits, <laughs> ah! and then just down, it falls down a flight of stairs. <laughs> you want to be a pussy about it and shoot him, and not find a way to kill somebody with a neck pillow? Then fine, do it your way. But I don't know. I consider myself an artist. You can only hear the story. I shot the guy so many times before you're like, can you shoot another guy? What happened? Bullet got it. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh, cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I used the other day? A weed whacker. Was it? I mean, how hard is that? It wasn't plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me more. Did you know that you can get almost the entire thing inside of a human rectum? <laughs> <laughs> Which part was sticking out? <laughs> Insertion is not the first issue. But you, uh, go ask the medical examiner. <laughs> I would think that the most difficult thing is trying to figure out ways to keep these people still while you're doing all of this. Oh no, Mert, they just, you find out like, it, it, we just do three seasons at the end of the third season, you just find out they've been roofing everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do you know how difficult it is to fit an entire weed whacker off a grown man's ass because he's struggling for his life? <laughs> No, <laughs> regrettably, we do. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't believe anybody else doesn't know this feeling. Oh, it's so freeing. <laughs> like trying to land men on the moon in the '60s. Almost impossible, but not 100 percent impossible. <laughs> We've proven it can be done. It just takes a lot, a lot of figuring on a piece of paper. You know what I mean? There's a lot An of abacus, a, a whiteboard, yeah. and... a weed whacker, and a shit ton of Vaseline. I would assume. And that's how you get to the moon. Mm -hmm. A weed whacker and a shit ton of Vaseline. That's definitely how you get me off the couch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's also how you can get me off on the couch. 
<laughs> kicking his lazy ass off the couch. Did you threaten him rectally with a weed whacker? You know what? Oddly enough, it hadn't occurred to me, but that'll probably do it. <laughs> I, I did, but he just pushed it up against it. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> I had to stop. I was ooped out. <laughs> TV. Mm. I, when I tell a gr group of you, uh, so we did the show in, at Buzz Bomb a week ago, and uh, somebody was talking about, I think somebody had mentioned, uh, that's the only reason I brought it up, proctology exams. And I was like, you young guys, uh, I know that everyone says, you know, you got to start when you're 40 or 45. I'm like, I'm telling you right now, if you've got insurance, it's very important go in there start doing it now early early intervention is the best thing also um you can go as many times a month and ask the doctor to check and <laughs> and if and if you tell him to choke you a little bit insurance still covers that too do they rosalie <laughs> oh, call dr big fingers i tell him i got something i got something planned <laughs> Hey, Doc, while you're doing, just because you're pushing against it, just, you just grab my neck a little bit. <laughs> if I'm looking for a proctologist, the first thing I want to do when I walk in is not actually talk to the receptionist. Like, I'm going to need to know the size of this man's hand. I need you to, <laughs> can you draw, make like one of those like, uh, like fifth <laughs> green turkeys. turkeys. Yeah. Give me a general idea of the girth of this man. Because what <laughs> I'm looking for is a number two pencil, not necessarily a bratwurst. So if this guy's nickname is like Vinny the Hook, I'm not going to be into it, okay? <laughs> when I worked for the railroad, it, that was part of the everybody had Interview to. process. <laughs> they like, felt like it because they fucked you all the time. Um, the But the doctor, they had to do prostate exams. Like that's what these, that's, that's what you they told us. You can't ride on a train. Without getting a finger in your pooper? <laughs> At least that's what they told me on that empty box car. There it is. Okay, yeah. But uh, no, this doctor we, was an enormous dude. And uh, he's like, all right, well, I got to check your butthole. <laughs> and I was like, you got to do what? And he goes, it's required. And I was like, nope. I said, not. I've you Dude was like 6'3 and easily weighed like 310 he was enormous no, dude nobody that can crack walnuts with their bare hand should yeah. be having their fingers inside of me yeah. i want a guy named ezra i want him to be 411 and preferably three weeks away from retirement you know what well, i mean i asked if there was if there was a female doctor in the building anywhere whose last name was like chan because yeah, there, you go. there you go just tiny that's fingers just that's what you got to be doing yeah, just I, I don't care if they're long. Fine, you get to feel what you need to feel, but just as long as I just go in and be like, Well, all right, well, I, I've learned something about myself. Do you got anybody with slightly larger fingers? Another nurse, <laughs> you br and bring in the janitor. I want him to hold the mop, uh, the, the mop up against my neck while you do it to see if that's something else. I, I like. pick my healthcare professionals in a very bigoted manner. <laughs> Only small Asian women are allowed to play with my butt, and definitely no men named Rommel will be my dentist. <laughs> so it's, def it's no old German gentleman uh, dentist. Um, I did have an old Polish woman dentist once, who I went to once, who literally said, stop being a baby, but she was in my mouth and did not give me enough Novocaine. I went, well, no, we're never coming back to you at all, nurse. <laughs> Ratchet, whatever the fuck your name is. She was uh, terrifying. What, did she spend time in Argentina? Is that why she's <sighs> like that? She just looks like the kind of person that as soon as she walks in, you know Thanksgiving is ruined. It's like, oh, fuck, you invited Auntie Grazo? Jesus Christ. God damn it. And she's going to expect everyone to eat some of that weird Polish food. Yeah, God. Why does everything have to be just, oh, God. You just a straw or a spoon or just, some, it's just mush. Just pickle, just some type of pickle and mustard. Just, <laughs> what is it? What kind, what is it? What, what's pickled? I think it's a cat. I think it's one of her cats. <laughs> Come on in. We're ruining cabbage. It's stinking up the place. Oh, God, <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> you know that you know your favorite that your favorite dish yeah we we just yeah no nope, never mind lost it i lost <laughs> it i had it and i lost it and i won't even go forward with it because it's a it was not good dinner's gonna... either going to be the sickly white of a dead fish <laughs> or some manner of horribly pale purple color <laughs> enjoy yeah you can drink it through a straw 
pasta water is not a soup. <laughs> ah, medicine. Good for you. I stupidly grabbed one of these Cayman Jack Moscow mules, and I thought that if I put a little gin in it, it would zhuzh it up. It's it's gone from undrinkable to I think poison. I, I can't, I'm not even. It's it's booze I won't drink. Wow. And I'll drink Skull vodka out of a plastic bottle if I have to. Mm-hmm. This I want. I'm done with this. I'm done over this. That is fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with that, I think it's time for a word from our sponsor. Hey. Seamless. Seamless. So, talking today about um, uh, some of the worst gigs or best gigs, but I know that you have a story for me. Uh, why was the gig in Tennessee so long? Uh, first off, it was Nashville, right? Well, I did Nashville Wednesday night, and I almost didn't want to say the name of the city. You know what? Fuck it. Clarksville, Tennessee Okay, is a level of hell that Dante was not aware of, but I feel like the next printing of the Inferno, we need to add an appendix so we can give Clarksville, Tennessee, honorable fucking mention. I'm going to say the, just the phrase Clarksville, Tennessee seems very benign. It's even got Superman's fucking um, alter ego in it. It just makes me feel okay. But, That's but, how they lure you in. Is it? Is it like an anglerfish coming after me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's right. it's like oh look look at that shiny bright light. This... So Fuck. Okay, so um, seamless. S- s- mm. Yeah, but we'll see. Uh, okay, just... so we were, we were talking about the fact that, uh, in your humble opinion, mm-hmm. Clarksville, Tennessee uh, is, is horrible and, and should not exist. Uh, um, I won't say that it should not exist. You know, I'm, it serves a purpose for some people. Um, but okay. l- let me, okay, I'm just going to get in. I want to say, first and foremost. Well, real quick, if you want, because I did, uh, in that second there, though, we had a small technical thing. I did just Google it. And then the first thing that came up, you know, just like the, the, the page for the city. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just, you know, Clarksville is a city in North Tennessee, the Customs House Museum, an ornate Victorian building from 1980, uh, 1898, offers a whole bunch of fucks, a whole bunch of nothing to do, um, uh, which I thought was weird that they put that on their municipal site. Yeah. Uh, population yeah. Uh, in 2020 was 156,092, mm-hmm. but they say that only about three dozen aren't shit. Yeah. So yeah. you might be onto something. I don't know. I've never been. Um, well, I mean, if if the the data that I put together uh, is anything, uh, it does reflect what you just said. Okay. Um, very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you know what? Maybe maybe I shouldn't shit on an entire city. Just you know, for, I'm not above it. Yeah, I know. I know, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Uh-huh. Um, so I want to say I do want to say that the Booker. That I was working that I was working through that night, who sets up shows. Um, he does a fantastic job. So I want to start with saying that he always does a good job. I've done a ton of quality shows for him in different places in different states. He uh, does a great job. And I also know that the reason his shows turn out so good is because when he is talking to a bar manager or the bar owner or the venue owner, mm-hmm. um, he will say, here is how to make this a successful show. You are investing in this. So here's how to make it successful. Okay. Um, he will tell him, you know, the, the place, if you have a separate showroom, put it in there. Oh, you don't. All right. Now, your your entire bar at x time is going to turn into 
the showroom, right? Um, and you sell tickets and you'll make money on booze and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, if, if people aren't there for the show, you politely ask them to leave because unless they want to buy a ticket and stick around, because then you guarantee that only people are there to watch the show. Um, he also gives suggestions on how to promote the show, how to push the show, how to get people interested into coming out because, <clears throat> as we all know with like a band you can go out to see a band sit there and talk to your friends and then the song ends you can go that was really good good job guys well done you can't ignore a comic and then pay attention at the punchline and go well that wasn't funny because oh, yeah. it's not going to make sense because no. you you have to have the setup the bridge and the punchline if you don't listen to those things, then um, it doesn't work. Comedy, you have to pay attention to. So here's here's what went down. I'm not going to give the bar's name because um, I'm I'm I, I'm trying to be walk the line of being professional, but also pissed. Okay. Um, and again, the Booker, it's not his fault. He's a great dude. Does a great job. There. Um, I go in to set up because I they didn't have their own sound system. Um, and so the booker was like, hey, do you mind bringing your sound system with you? Not at all. Takes me eight minutes to set up. Okay. You know, I was like, do we need lights or not? I said, and I brought lights with me just in case. And he was like, I don't think so. The way they made it sound. Okay, perfect. No problem. I get there. I got there. Oh, uh, pretty early about an hour and a half early maybe a little bit before so that i could get there meet the owner set up the where set up wherever we we're going to be set up um grab some food hang out get a feel for the place right so the owner comes up and uh the bar I, well the bartender had directed me yeah you'll be over there in that corner cool Seems decent. All right. There's a bunch of tables set up over here. And then, because it's one of those bars that is wide, but shallow. So I was like, okay, if we, that's, you know, the room is oh. why is very wide, but not very deep. So, um, but I was like, okay, there's plenty of tables over here. That'll work. Um, and if they need to, I'm sure they'll move some over. Because there was a bunch of tables over here with pool tables and shuffleboard. And um, the dart boards were right next to where we would be performing. Uh, TVs all over the walls. I'm just painting a picture here, bud. Uh -uh. Um, as I'm setting up, the owner comes up, introduces himself, starts out pretty friendly. Um, and uh, I was like, yeah, you know, I just like to get here early, set up things. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see how this goes. I was like, I'm sorry. He goes, oh, this is our first one. I was like, okay, cool. Did you, I know you and the booker, you know, had the chat about it. He's like, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to take advice from somebody who does this for a living. No. No. <laughs> Why would I? This is my bar. We just, uh -huh. we, we, <laughs> let me get to the best. I, I'm working my way to the best part of this okay. conversation. So I get set up. I was like, how many tickets have we sold? He goes, oh, I don't know. okay who does i'm just curious because you know he was like uh i think one of the bartenders might know think we could find that out okay he was like yeah i mean i guess okay so i go start talking to the bartender she was like yeah we've only sold like 10 tickets all right um we'll put on a show a hell of a show for 10 people that's and that's what i told her I was like, doesn't matter if it's 10. I said, maybe we'll get a bunch of walk-ins at the last minute, you know, to sell tickets. And I said, are you going to have a door guy? No, we never have a door guy. Well, but if you're doing ticketed sales, you need somebody at the door. To make sure that they paid for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the owner comes up. Well, I'm trying to eat. And he's he's asking me questions. And, uh, and a lot of them were pretty inane questions that told me he had no I and I don't expect everybody to know about stand-up comedy 
but this the types of questions he was asking me i was like you really don't have a clue and he was not like satisfied. he didn't get the concept like, what's the difference between this and like uh i don't know bullfighting would you say it, it, um, it eight words or less well it became evident that he did not know the difference no okay um, good. but he did ask me uh he's like so how many how many of you was on the circuit i was like there's no circuit no the stand-up circuit that's not a thing that that, that hasn't existed since the cat skills <laughs> I said there used to be, I mean, the idea that we had a circuit back in the 80s when there were a bunch of, like, funny bone chains where you work one weekend and then just move your way through. I said, but those don't exist anymore. I mean, you have a handful of funny bones, but that's, I was like, you know, this booker has several of us that he books out and, and such. And he was like, well, no, I don't think you're understanding my question. I was like, I don't think you're understanding my answer. But okay. <laughs> I don't think you're understanding your own question because those aren't the words you're trying to use. So. We were talking, I was like, well, you know, we'll see how this goes tonight. I was like, well, if you just follow, you know, what what dude bro had said. You are working so hard to not use this person's name. I love I it. Am, and I'm not going to ask you. Yeah, but I, I will. You keep the, Booker. Dude bro. <laughs> Booker. We'll just call him Booker. That's his name <laughs> for now. Super Dave Osborne. <laughs> uh, rest in peace. Um, the human pelican. What? I don't know. Just, we're making up nicknames for this cat. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, he's like, eh, well, you know, I don't know if that's going to work for our place. I was like, well, it works every other place I've been to. And your place <laughs> is pretty similar to these other places. And he was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, I just, you know, I'm, I got to, I, I got to sell at least any, I forget how many tickets he said he had to sell. And he goes to, to break even. Cause I've got, you know, I got some money invested in you guys. I said, well, if you help us make it successful, if you do, well, then it'll, you'll make your money back. You know, you got to count the booze sales too. That's kind of the, well, well, I don't, I don't really count that into it. I was like, well, but that's, that's really the, the thing. That's where you make your, and I told him, I said, that's where you make, that's where comedy clubs make their money. That's where you make your money. It's chicken strips and beer. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. All right. He's like, you know, we do we do some events and we get to, we'll get a band occasionally, uh, DJs. Uh, I'll tell you the best one we've ever done, and I'd like to get them back. I was like, oh yeah, what what's the best you've done? He goes, we had midget wrestling. Nice. That nice. And I was like, huh. Cheers. And just just like I uh, can I get another one of these, please? Another one. You know how many times I've paid to see that. I mean, it hasn't been in the last 15 years, but in my late 20s, yeah. whenever they whenever they were on their circuit, I just I'm like, can I buy season passes? I know this is horrible, but I just, they're earning a living. <laughs> but they're doing it voluntarily. It's not like, there's no, not like two guys with cattle prods at the edges of the, of the no, ring. No, it's, like, it's, it's, it's not like a handful of scared little people and you pay the bar order five bucks to wrestle them. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's not what that is. It's, no. it, it's a show that they've, you know, they've choreographed. Yeah. They, they it's know, fantastic you know. too. I've seen it. It's fantastic. But I was just like, great. This is, this is going to go real poorly. Where the hell do you put a wrestling ring? See, now I'm thinking logistics. Of mis 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 I don't have, I don't Doesn't have matter. answers. Doesn't I don't matter. have answers. I know. That's um, just where my brain's gonna go. So that to me, that was the that was the icing on that was the best part when I was he's like best best we've ever done was midget wrestling. I'd like to bring him back. Fuck. All right, cool. Yep, this well. is the kind of place I'm in. Um, as I'm sitting there waiting for the I'm kind of watching the door to see um when the other comics gonna show up. Um a, a biker gang came in. Okay, like a legit biker gang. They had the club vests. Mm -hmm. uh, well, are these toys for tots bikers, or are these one percenters? Uh, I didn't look up their their club name. Okay, but uh, most of their patches had like middle fingers and "fuck you" and you know, it, which right. still could be toys for tots if the tots were fucking cool. Uh, but these aren't the guys that are like gonna just volunteer to like work security at the pride parade. You know? No, I don't think no. so. I don't think so. Um, uh, did did have a handful of them um, after the show offer me some uh, some some uh, uh, they, uh, they wanted me to party. We'll put it that way. Um, I don't want to <laughs> implicate these gentlemen, but um, 
they wanted me to, to party with but with powder and uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. i was like mm, uh, no thanks fellas uh, i gotta drive back to the hotel i'm not really familiar with this city we are the the the, the other comic and i are trying to talk to the owner and be like all right well are you going to get people out of here well i'm going to see if i can sell some more tickets okay but the people that aren't on like here for that he's like well i can't kick them out they're good paying regulars okay so um so then you're just gonna piss off the people who paid to sit there he he bought them beer to make up for it um the people that had already bought tickets he bought them beer um he when we're getting ready to start because we told him we got to turn off the tvs we got to shut down the you know the machines every it's got to be and i'd ask the other comic is like you want me to go get my lights because it's kind of dark in this corner and he was like fucking why <laughs> He's like, we might as well just have a rolled up newspaper screaming into it to try and project <laughs> ourselves for all that people could hear. And so I was like, yeah. owner comes up and he's like, well, you ready to start? And I was like, yeah, it's, it is, it's showtime if you're ready to go. And he's like, great. He goes, I just let you know, I'm going to leave TVs on. And there was a TV above our fucking heads. Nice. But he was like, I'm going to leave those, that, that TV on. People are actually watching that. And I was like, you, you have, we haven't even started yet. And you're already like, this ain't working. I went up and I pulled every comedian trick I knew. Oh, other good part. So they moved, they'd moved some tables for some folks that came, quote unquote, came for the show. Uh One of the, the two dudes, bunch of gals, as this one dude is coming over to set drinks down. He's and he's sitting right in front of where we are performing. His woman was like, Oh, you're sitting right there. He's gonna go after you because you're a comic too. And I was like, Really? You're you're a comic? And he's like, Yeah, yeah, man. And I was like, Cool, that's right. Uh, right on, man. I won't give I won't go after you unless you give me a reason to. Ha ha. ha right. I start in, I try, you know, hey everybody, because I I had to go up completely cold. There was no MC. It was just me and the other comic. <laughs> Did you even do the thing where you like tried to an- announce yourself from the bathroom on the microphone or anything? You're just nope. Like, nope. Fuck I it. just went up. I just started with the, Woo, let's get the energy going. You know, the, okay. yeah. the classic MC, get up there and be like, what is up? Everybody, thanks for coming out. Whoa, come on, let's get some. And at one point, so the bikers are still in there. People are still playing pool. All the machines are still on. The poker machine keeps going. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> and the other comic is just leaning on the bar, just doing this. And I'm trying everything. And there was a chick sitting on the other side of the bar that went, turn up your speakers. We can't hear you. And I said, tell the people around you to shut the fuck up. But sure. <laughs> And, of course, I turn up the speakers. What do they do? They start talking louder. Yeah, yeah. And that's the... the, I'm going to put this in quotes. The comic right in fucking front of me, he and his whole group talked throughout almost the entire show. And at one point, I looked at him. I said, are you really a comic? I said, or have you done, like, three open mics and now you tell everybody you're a comic and you've already got business cards made? I said, because I'll tell you right now, no real comic would sit here and let his whole fucking table talk over the comic performing. This tells me you're an open micer and that you probably won't be doing it for very long. And his just eyes got big. I said, no, that wasn't funny. But I told you, don't give me a reason to fucking come after (laughs) had How many people did you have to bludgeon with a mic stand? Well, his buddy was this great big dude. And he looked at me and he goes, the fuck do you say? And I said, I don't know. Clean the shit out of your ears. You probably could have heard me the first time. I won't repeat myself. If you want to dick off, there's a beer garden. Go dick off back there. I said, or you can wait until I'm done with my set, and then we can go talk outside. Choice is yours. And he started to, like, push himself. And (laughs) the dude that was a comic put his hand on his arm, and he was like, "Uh uh-uh. 
remember a fire plug like that talks like that probably knows something that we don't <laughs> that was like i'd listen to him and this is all off the microphone and then i went back and was like <laughs> all right uh and and the bitch on the other bars going i don't know what he just said to them folk <laughs> can he t- t- speak it louder now there were a handful of people that like told people they were there for the show they had looked me in the other comic up on youtube they were excited to see the show they came up like closer i kept telling people just shut the fuck up i'm trying to listen and they had a great time that was like six of them the entire there was probably 90 people in that bar um plus more outside in the beer garden and six people paid attention lovely and as soon as as soon as the the other comic was done two women walked up to the couple that had moved their chairs closer in front of the uh the dart boards those two women got up like could you move we want to play darts (laughs) and i will say because they were women that sat close but talked the entire fucking time uh-huh. so i'm trying to carry my shit out and it's not like metal tip darts they were just the plastic ones and so i just while they're trying to throw darts i just carry my shit out right in front of them and one of them i stepped right in front of her as she threw the dart and it just hit me in the head and i just kept walking <laughs> <laughs> um it, I, it was Oh, here's the other thing. But the bikers were okay? Um, there, I will tell you about... I, so I said six people paid attention the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, four of the bikers, uh, and I appreciate the fuck out of them. So if they look me up, they find this show, and they hear me bitching, the six people that actually came up and went, hey, great job, we enjoyed it, we're sorry. It also pissed us off that we couldn't hear half of what you guys were trying to do because of this crowd... You guys are appreciated. You guys are rad. There were four bikers that came down to the end of the bar and listened to me, and they were they were having a great time. I will give them that. Those are the ones that afterwards came up and was like, "Hey, man, that was good shit. Sorry, sorry that some of these other people are rude. Uh, you want a party?" And I was like, hmm. <laughs> uh, "A little bit of me kind of wants to. I'll be honest. I want to <laughs> I want to numb the shit out of this experience, but no, it's probably not a good idea." Um, I forgot though the owner. He was like, I was like, so uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's only 10 seconds, so that's crazy. He's like, Well, I did what I could. I put a flyer on the door. Huh. I was like, Oh, did you push it anywhere else? He's like, Well, I mean, we don't really got Facebook or nothing. People just kind of know. I said, Did you throw anything? anywhere newspaper radio i mean internet really is kind of the best place to do he's like <laughs> nah i ain't done none of that <clears throat> see i don't understand because i've been an audience member well no 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 i was going to be an audience member you can't have entertainment thrust upon you if you're not prepared for it because you might just not be in the fucking mood you know what I mean? Like, if you buy a ticket for a show, it's like, yeah, I'm interested in this. That's, uh, I, I heard about this show. That could be cool. But there was, I mean, I can think of a very specific time that I was at a bar in Chicago with a couple of buddies. And out of nowhere, just, like, lights came on in this corner that had been dark the entire time. We're like, oh, they got a stage. And nothing seems to be going on. So we were just there halfway through our food. This guy just walks out and he starts doing mentalism at people who are trying to, like you said, drink beer and eat chicken wings. And they had not planned for this at all. And I was just like... We felt bad. I left. I'm like, I am not in the mood. This is watch yeah. some idiot read somebody else's mind who doesn't want their mind read. He doesn't know why he's here. This is miserable for everybody. And I'm not going, I don't feel like paying attention. So I'm going to pay the bill and politely leave. Um, but he did see our whole table get up and go. We waved, but I was like, I'm not just like, it sucks. But I mean, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to have magic thrust upon me tonight. Yeah. I'm just not in the mood to be polite about it. Uh, and I don't think that was a dick move. No. Like, no. If you're, that's what I'm saying. You can't, Entertainment like that where you have to pay attention, you can't. Like if, if dude had gotten up there and been like, hey, my name's uh, my name's uh, James. I'm just going to play a little uh, little music for you. A little, you know, do a little cover song, a few of my originals. 
Uh, you guys have fun, drink some beer, tip your bartender. You'd be like, all right, I don't got to spend money on the jukebox. This guy's going to play me some tunes. A lot of times, especially around here, man, like every bar you go to, there's got to, there's a guy with a, well, shit in Tennessee too, but every fucking bar you go to, there's a guy with a guitar playing wagon wheel nine times in a row. So it's, I, I, for a while, I almost feel bad for not like paying a lot of attention, but I'm like, "Ah, I don't, come on, man. I'll, and then it's like a, it's like a bathroom attendant. It's like okay, I'll throw a couple of bucks in the jar, but I feel like I have to. I don't know why I'm right. here. Don't sit me anywhere near this guy where you can make eye contact with me. I hope he's okay with being background music. I yeah. don't think anybody's buying his CD. Nobody has a CD <laughs> player anymore, but he sure as hell has a box of them sitting on the stage. Uh huh. Because he he made them back in 1998, and he's still trying to sell them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you cannot do ambush comedy. Like no. I, first thing out of my mouth was, "Hey guys, thanks for coming out." to uh, the comedy night here at XYZ Bar. Uh, For those of you that came out for the show and bought tickets, thank you very much. For those of you that didn't realize there was going to be comedy, I guess, (laughs) no fucking surprise. (laughs) And uh, I swear to God, there were people that looked over their shoulders and went, what? All right. And then turned back. Like we had just showed up and we're like, fuck you. We're going to put on a fucking show. Eat my fucking asshole. And we're like, no, you fucking hired us to do this shit. Yeah. But I love that. Because, I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with, like, the several tables, I'm sure. It's like, this is their one time a week to get away from the wife and the kids and just bitch about work and have a couple of beers. Like, ah, fuck. I look forward to this all week and there's some Yankee up there just chasing a grease fucking monkey around the stage. I don't give a shit about his uh, take on uh, politics right now. I just yeah. don't. Well, I, I love the, the, the closer. He was up there just like narrating the room when he realized he's like, I did. He said, I tried to do material. I got maybe seven minutes of material out at different times didn't work i just went back to and he was just he was pulling the bill burr where he would say, say something then look down and be like 45 more minutes all right and then because <laughs> he, he I, t- I said hey he walked up and he goes you how did long did time. you do um i was doing I don't, not not of material how long were you on the stage i, I was a better way to ask up there for i was supposed to do 30 to 35 i did 32 and a half so okay so yeah. i split the difference mm-hmm. and was just like good enough and i and i tried to bring him back and i'm excited for you know the next guy all right dude you've seen this and bah, and doing the intro and people are just talking over the intro and i was like oh and dude walked up and he goes you did your best and you did your time i can't guarantee i'm gonna do either one <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah at one point he's like this guy, I'm talking directly to him. He doesn't even know it. He's just sitting there drinking a drink, doing this. He doesn't have any idea that I'm even talking about him. He looks stupid. He got a stupid mustache. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> 40 more minutes. <laughs> so, because yeah, he was doing um, so I was just featuring. He was he was headlining. Um but at, at one point, he just pulled the ripcord. I don't know how far into it he made it. And he's like, he, he goes, honestly, I lost track of time. I, he goes, I was kind of keeping track. And then I forgot to set my stopwatch on my on my watch. I just was like, okay, it's got approximately this much time. And he goes, and I kind of just was like, I don't care. He's just eyeballed it. Yeah. <laughs> like he's making a fucking picnic table. Just like, ah, I don't need to measure. Oh, yeah. Like, Good enough. I mean, he did He did everything he could. I mean, he tried every trick. He walked into where the where people were. And of, as he was trying to do that, they got up from their tables and left. Yeah. That would because be probably. They were there. Like, they literally came over for the show. And then they were just like, meh. Uh, there was one woman that I was... I don't remember what I was talking about. And... I said, I don't even remember what it, she started yelling something. I was like, what? Because I was like, okay, maybe I can get an interaction. Maybe I can get like something going here. I'm going to, I'm going to lean on crowd work. That's fine. We'll lean on crowd work. And she was, she was so drunk. She wasn't making sense. And then she, oh, I remember because I said something about Decatur, Illinois. And I was trying to say to her, this is hilarious. It doesn't matter where I go. 
where I've been to, if I mentioned Decatur, Illinois, there's at least one person in the audience that knows where it is. And that's, I say it with this joke every time because it, it cracks me up because it doesn't matter where I am. I've been in Northern Wisconsin. I've been in buttfuck Arkansas. Uh, it doesn't matter. I've been all the way to, you know, in Georgia, I've been at South Dakota. I mentioned Decatur and somebody went, Oh, and I was like, this is fucking hilarious. Well, the whole town does smell. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. what everyone remembers. <laughs> But this woman just yelling so and I was like, what? She goes, it's too north. I was like, yes, that's how geography works. <laughs> it's too north. I was like, are you you're in Tennessee and you're talking about central Illinois and that's too north? Because I asked her, I said, are, are you I said, yes, that's how geography works. Are you trying to make a salient point? Or are you just yelling at the guy that's been up here trying to get your attention? for 28 minutes what is what is just south enough like can she get all the way to st louis before her bat signal tingles and she's got to turn the fuck around and start running like where is too north for her well and then she came up to me afterwards to try and tell me what she was trying to say and she was but essentially what i got out of it was what she told me um because i could tell that she uh, you know uh, she she was of a well, she's like, I'm, I'm Filipino. And I was like, okay. She goes, and that's too North for me with all the liberals. I was like, so you're a racist Filipino. What does being Filipino have to do with that? You sound like you're a Southern bitch. <laughs> uh, that was, I don't know why she told me. She just kept saying I'm Filipino and it's too liberal up there. Well, you know how it is with the Filipino female population in Tennessee, Larry. Nobody's ever said anything about that because it's not a thing. It's not it's, a thing. It's, there is no stereotype for that because it's no, not a thing. No, there's Nobody's not. But there, apparently there is now. Yeah. Uh, apparently you just acclimate to what's around you. Yeah. Um, but it just, it, everything. They all wear MAGA tampons. <sighs> They don't, they don't use tampons. They just give them. They just give them cloth and send them out to the woods, like it says yeah. to do. In the <laughs> we don't talk about this. We don't talk about. This. She's so what gone. I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is, is that not so much the entire town sucks. There's one bar owner who doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground, and he doesn't believe in the Wi-Fi. Um, there's one deaf barfly that has no problem screaming at people. There's six at least comedy fans, and there's a handful of really scary bikers who um, will offer you blow. Um, if, if, if they're feeling bad for you. Yeah. It's really all I've learned about this place. Yeah. Um, also, uh, it, the hotels there are expensive. There's uh, like the decent hotel, even the mid-grade ho hotels were still super, like the, the Hambone Inn, super <laughs> expensive there. That's like, what it's called? Hampton are you Inn. fucking around? Okay, the there it is. Yeah, the Hampton Inn. It's the Hambone It could have been. You were in fucking Tennessee, man. You could have uh, stayed yeah. in the Hambone. And so I was like, man, I, I can't even stay. Like, normally I get a deal. I, I don't know if you know this. I am um, a, a, Hampt or a, a Hilton Honors member. I'm at the gold level, <laughs> which is what I tell everybody when I check in. To, doesn't matter. Could be a red roof in. Excuse me, I'm a Hilton Honors <laughs> member. They're like, okay, we'll not, I guess, spit in your, in your water bottle while you're looking. <laughs> Just so you know, I got a C in English. <laughs> What? In the 90s? Okay. Well, I'll just give you all this information you don't need. All these things are true. <laughs> Excuse okay. me. Excuse me. Um, I, I understand we're at a Burger King, <laughs> but I am a Hilton Honors member. But normally I can get a pretty good price on on a, a Hampton Inn. Um, usually cheaper than like a cheap hotel, but for whatever reason in Clarksville, they had jacked the price. And so Nick found a relatively... Um, well, no, it was a very reasonably priced hotel. The pictures looked pretty good. Um, can I tell you? Uh, it was not. Uh -huh. um, the air conditioner wasn't sure if it was going to work. Uh, and every time it kicked on, it sounded like a small Cessna. Good, Trying good. to take off through the wall. Um, You're uh, calling the tower screaming, you don't know how to land the plane. The pilot's <laughs> gone. <laughs> it's just me and the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, I knew I should have pulled over during the storm. Mm, correct. But uh, pull over the hotel room. <laughs> and there was a small dog in the uh, room across from me who uh, did bark 
most of the time. Okay. Uh, so if <laughs> when the air conditioner would kick off, the dog would wake me up. But then I would kind of acclimate to the dog barking or the dog would, would calm down. I'd fall back to sleep and then um, and, and then Gilligan's tiny airplane would start taking off again and that would wake me up. Um, the hallway had a very interesting odor, but I will say clean room. Definitely okay. a nice. The room was clean and I was like, fucking who cares at this point? I just I'm this is where I am. Um, it was it just man I, I get it was just one of those gigs that I like I said if I were to be writing a script about a stand-up comic on the road and I were to write all of that into the script they would hand it back and be like no one's going to fucking believe this this is ridiculous no show is going to have Sure, you can might have this element, this element, this element that you got to deal with. It's not going to have the whole thing. These are all the tropes, man. Rewrite this shit. And uh, but yeah, it was it was something. Nashville was was fun though. <laughs> hey, so uh, we're gonna do a guerrilla comedy show. It's kind of like street theater, but we put up walls so people can't just leave. Um, but we're gonna need you to bring all of your own equipment and schlep it all yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and you will be worried that you might get shot or stabbed mm -hmm. or both. I should have put an and and or stabbed. Um, uh, and murder or, bikers and or, solid comics with murder of a weed eater up your butt, mm -hmm. <laughs> greased up weed eater directly up your ass. Well, and then when we got done, we had me and the other comic had several people. They were like, "Hey, you, you want a shot? You want us to buy you a shot?" and <laughs> Dude, dude bro just lo every, everybody looked at me and be like no we both have to drive we're driving separately we don't know the city very well also i think we both just want to get the fuck out of here <laughs> and everyone that came up was like hey can i get you a shot they were like nope completely understood you guys were great what we could hear of it we tried very hard to keep the people so sorry we're sorry that this happened uh this is a long so, episode so when are you going back hmm uh it looks like uh august 14th i'll be Good. okay <laughs> yeah uh, i mean here was here's the thing i'm bitching about it but i got paid so yeah so grudgingly by a man who didn't want to sell tickets and then was pissed that it didn't work <laughs> i put a flyer on the door mm -hmm. oh one whole flyer i doubt most of these people down here can read and if they can they ain't gonna read no fruity flyer that's probably propaganda from the liberals. Too north. Too north, Larry. It's too north. Too many liberals. I'm Filipino and it's too liberal. <laughs> I'm Filipino and I'm offended by the, the fact that central Illinois exists. What? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a bald white guy and, uh, and I like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I bet you without even looking at it, I can describe her entire Instagram. Like, it wouldn't be difficult. You know? No. It's all just pictures of homemade lumpia and, uh, it's, and, and rebel flags. Uh, uh, Christian quotes, rebel flags, MAGA hats, her on the four-wheeler, um, mudden, uh -huh. um, shooting, uh, and then her and her and her guy and better, better no bitch want to take no him from me because I'll be <laughs> fighting mad. And then something about pro-life. She's all proud of herself. There's a 30-second clip on there where she drugged up her pit bull so she could tattoo Let's Go Brandon on his stomach. <laughs> people like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Interesting people. So, yeah, I would say, what did you learn? But I think that you learned just not to go back to the place in Clarksville, Tennessee and try to put on a show. Yeah, that, that's what I've learned. Uh, again, again. The uh, the Booker, great dude. The other comic who will great. remain nameless. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to drag him into it. No, I get it. I get it. Um, the 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 six people that actually paid attention, you were you were fantastic. Uh, bikers, thanks to the four of you that that uh, came up and was like, I will say there was one lady who came up to me uh, and was like. 
<laughs> because I went out to the beer garden to uh, just get out of that room. And I even told, I, I told the, the other comic, I was like, I need to go outside. And he was like, I don't blame you. He goes, I know you would just leave if your equipment wasn't up here. I'm like, I need new equipment anyway. I may abandon it. <laughs> but a uh, lady came up to me. She's like, you were great. You're real good. A whole lot better than this other guy. I said, he's been on for like four minutes. She's like, he said two things and I didn't like him. So there you go. And I was like, well, I'll take it. Thanks a lot. That's great. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Thanks for shitting all over a guy, I guess. <laughs> well, I look like this. I was wearing my, my Peaches Records t-shirt and jeans, and this guy came in. He had his long hair and, like, the bandana, like what you do mm -hmm. sometimes, um, and a button-up shirt and dress shoes. And I'm sure they immediately were oh. like, look at this fancy pants boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know, man. Uh, I probably don't want to wear anything with buttons unless it has a, a a name patch over the tit that just says like Dale the Third. <laughs> we gotta find you somebody in your life that's actually named Dale. You invoke Dale. I do a lot. Da we need to get you a Dale. Yep, Dale, Dusty, Darren. I got two Darrens. I got I got a brother-in-law and a cousin named Darren. That's fun. But yeah, Larry and Dale. Those are the names of the murder cops. <laughs> Love it. Larry and Dale. Hey, what'd you learn today? Uh, just really that bikers still do blow. Uh, I thought it had gone mostly to meth. Um, uh, I, oh, I'm I sure some of the others were doing that too. Okay, yeah. But the, maybe they just like had plenty of coke to offer. You know what I mean? Like when you have people come over to the house, you, you say, you can open any bottle of wine, just not the 1923. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of thing. And they had the good meth. Uh, let's see. I didn't need a reason to not go to Clarksville, Tennessee. So but I helped you out there. I have one, yeah. Um, yeah. And I learned that uh, it is true that a lot of people who own businesses honestly have just fall, failed up and they have no idea what they're doing. Um, nobody. He is going to open up a good. second location, though, on the other side of town. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he is. He's making good enough money that he can, he can open up another location. Does not surprise me. Um, uh, never surprises me that just the stupidity of some human beings just come to accept it. Yeah. I mean, I won't say this is the worst gig that I've ever done. No, there was that one time you lost a toe. Yeah. But I mean, they sewed it back on. Yeah. Yeah. Not permanently lost it. I mean, I mean the... you didn't, you didn't misplace it. it. It got removed, but yeah. 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 It just, it's still there. It's upside down. They didn't do it yeah. right. But you know, what do you expect from a drunk medic on site? You know? <laughs> I can sell her. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, as long as it stops the bleeding. I can't guarantee that. I stand on my head to trim my fucking toenails now. But outside <laughs> of that, it's fine. <laughs> and I put it on OnlyFans. <laughs> All right. You want to crash this plane? Absolutely. Let's hey, gu guess what? What's that? I love you. I actually, you just reminded me I need to do some more content for my OnlyFans, too. Oh, yeah. Well, get on that, because uh -huh. I'm not... I know. I literally have to get on something to do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not paying 15 bucks a month for nothing. You're but currently, I am, because yeah. somebody's had issues. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to keep subscribing. I love you, buddy. I love you back. parts about hanging out with these guys. Oh. God damn it, son of a bitch, motherfucker.